Hi everybody, very important video this one as we cover formula, key equations, key conditions of everything in the macro course. Use all of this in your macro exams, but also in any macro multiple choice questions. Take it all in, use it, go and smash your exams because of it. Let's dive straight in with aggregate demand. So AD, simple equation, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. That is consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. Nominal GDP, there are three methods of calculating it. The output method, that is the final value of all goods and services produced in an economy. The income method, where we add up all the factor incomes earned in an economy. Wages and salaries, plus rent, plus profit, plus interest. The income method. The expenditure method is just AD, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. To calculate real GDP, the equation is this. You take nominal GDP. You divide by a price index and then multiply by 100. That price index could be a CPI index. It could be the GDP deflator. If you need to learn the GDP deflator, that will go on the bottom here. Speaking of the GDP deflator, if you need to learn it, here is the equation. It's a nominal GDP divided by real GDP multiplied by 100. So now if you need to calculate nominal GDP, we know what to do. Uh, the one method above that you might need to calculate is the expenditure method. So that's just AD, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. But also we can rearrange the equations above. So we can say that nominal GDP is simply real GDP multiplied by a price index and then divide all of that by 100 to calculate nominal GDP. What about GNI? Well, GNI is GDP plus net factor income. What's net factor income? Well, this is any income earned by domestic factors of production abroad minus any income earned by foreign factors of production domestically. That's how you get GNI. Green GDP is GDP minus any environmental costs. That's green GDP. If you need to use the circular flow to illustrate macroequilibrium, how do you do that? You compare injections and leakages. So if, for example, injections are equal to leakages, I plus G plus X, investment plus government spending plus exports is equal to savings plus taxation plus imports, that is macroequilibrium. Injections are equal to leakages. If injections are greater than leakages, that's economic growth in an economy. If injections are less than leakages, this is negative growth, an economy that's shrinking. So that's how you use the circular flow to do that. What about the multiplier? Two equations for the multiplier. One equation is one over one minus the marginal propensity to consume. But another way of getting it is one over the marginal propensity to withdraw. The MPW is made up of the marginal propensity to save plus the marginal propensity to tax, plus the marginal propensity to import. Add those up, the three leakages, you get the marginal propensity to withdraw. Two ways of getting the multiplier. From there, from the multiplier, if you need to work out the change in national income, you just take the initial injection and you multiply by the multiplier and you get the overall change in national income. The accelerator effect, we are looking at an increase in the rate of growth of GDP, which then links to higher investment, which then gives you further increases in the rate of GDP growth. The budget deficit, this occurs when government spending is greater than tax revenue, but crucially here in a year, in a fiscal year. That time frame at the end is very important. A budget surplus is when tax revenue is greater than government spending, but again, in a year. Okay, so a budget deficit would be annual government borrowing. So the key is in a year, it's annual here, it's annual. Uh, the unemployment rate, to work that out, you take the number of unemployed and you divide by the labor force, the size of the labor force, and then multiply by 100 to get the rate. So who are in the labor force? The labor force is made up of the employed and the unemployed. They make up the labor force. Uh, to work out an index number, you take the number you wanna convert, let's call that the raw number. So the number you want to convert and you divide by the raw number in a base year, and then again multiply by 100. To work out a percentage change, it's just the difference between two numbers divided by the original number times 100. To work out a weighted price index, so for example, a weighted CPI, 
price index. What would you do? Well, normally here you'll be given a variety of goods and services that form a basket. You'll be given their prices. So first thing you do, convert those prices to index using the equation above. Multiply those index prices by the weights. Add up the weighted prices that you have and then divide by the total number of weights. Then you get a weighted price index in value terms. What about a real interest rate? Well, the real interest rate, you just take the nominal interest rate and minus whatever the inflation rate is. Great start, let's keep going. And now some calculations that link to a progressive income tax system, starting with taxable income. This is just income earned minus the tax-free allowance. It's usual in progressive income tax systems for there to be a portion of income you can earn without paying any tax at all. That's the tax-free allowance. So income earned minus the tax-free allowance is going to be then taxable income left at the end. What about the average rate of tax? We'll apply that again to income tax in a progressive income tax system. This is simply the amount of income tax paid divided by total income earned multiplied by 100. What about the marginal rate of tax? A very useful equation to work out the tax rate on any additional income that's earned. The neat trick with marginal equations, it's always the average equation with changes in it. So now this is just the change in income tax paid divided by the change in income multiplied by 100. For any marginal equation, take the average equation, put changes in it, you get the marginal equation. Now the Gini coefficient, learn this in words as opposed to using letters. So the Gini coefficient is the area between the line of perfect equality and the Lorenz curve divided by the total area beneath the line of perfect equality. So to be clear, L-O-P-E, the line of perfect equality, L-C is your Lorenz curve. Absolute poverty nowadays, world-renowned, is defined as uh, income less than $2.15 a day and you're operating beneath the poverty line there, whereas relative poverty is when income earned is less than 60% of the median income. So 60% of the median income, if you're earning less than that, you're in relative poverty. The balance of payments must balance, so countries that are running current account deficits must have a financial plus capital account surplus that offsets the size of the current account deficit. And for countries with a current account surplus, they must run an equal financial plus capital account deficit to balance the balance of payments. The Marshall Learner condition states that for a currency depreciation to improve a country's current account deficit, the PD of X plus the PD of M must be greater than one. The terms of trade, the equation, you take an index of export prices, divide by an index of import prices, and then multiply by 100. Good to know how to interpret HDI scores. So if a country scores 0.8 or greater, it's very high development. From 0.7 to 0.79 is high development. 0.55 to 0.69, medium development. Anything less than 0.55 is low development. How to work out the yield on a bond? Well, you take the coupon rate, the interest rate on the bond, divide by the market price of the bond, multiply by 100. To work out the money multiplier, it's 1 over the reserve requirement. That is R. So R is the reserve requirement. 1 over that, you get the money multiplier. The Fisher equation, or the quantity theory of money, the equation is that MV, the money supply, multiplied by the velocity of circulation, is equal to PQ, the average price level multiplied by the value of goods and services in the economy. Q is real GDP. So MV equals PQ. And classical economists assume that V and Q are fixed, which takes you to an increase in the money supply directly correlating with an increase in the price level, i.e. inflation. Now, two financial market ratios, useful when you're learning financial market regulation. Liquidity ratio is just current assets, so short-run assets in the balance sheet divided by current liabilities, which is short-run liabilities times 100. And the capital ratio we're taking capital in the liabilities part of the balance sheet divided by loans times 100. So there you go, key formula, equations, conditions for everything in the macro course. Use this to blitz your macro exams 
and macro multiple choice questions. Make sure you've seen the micro video doing exactly the same thing. But thank you for watching this video, guys. Can't wait to see you in future videos. Thank you.